And welcome to the WAD Show, ladies and gentlemen. This is a bit of a tail in between my legs show, and I'll be talking about that in a little yeah. bit more detail later. But um, we made a video that you guys didn't like very much, and I feel like I need to address that. Um, YouTube also rolled out some new stuff, new copyright claim system and new monetization efforts, which is cool. And there's some other kind of general, you know, Intel's doing some rumory stuff, and Nintendo Switch Lite was announced, and other fun things. Intro yeah, we've tech? actually got a lot of great topics for you guys today. Yeah. Uh, Jono did the WAN Show document, oh. and well, he also did it last week, which was part oh. of the reason that we didn't really didn't have anything to talk about last week. Whoa! But that's okay because uh, I gave him some coaching this week, and he checked okay. in with me about okay. the topics ahead of time. And I think there's actually some some discussion meet in here. Uh, there's a bit of a a non-controversy, which non to me, in and of itself, is kind of controversial. Um, so AMD said that PCI Express Gen 4 would not work on previous generation motherboards. And then ASUS went out and published a list of previous gen boards that <laughs> it'll work on. And it's a, it's a funny thing because um, I think that AMD fanboys aren't really going to like my take on this, but my my feeling is that if the same thing had happened with Intel, people would be shrieking about it. And now that it's happening with AMD, it's like, oh, that's pretty cool. So let's get let's get to that uh, a little bit later. But first, let's go ahead and roll the intro, and uh, we'll we'll chat about these topics in a little bit here. All right. Just one. Go ahead and pop that up there. Whoop, 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 whoop. Kind of looks like it was just one. And back to us. Okay, so um, why don't we jump right into the video that we uploaded today. So this is something that I've actually addressed on the WAN show in the past. I'm just going to fire it up on my laptop here. Hopefully my, uh, my screen sharing is working here. Um, here we go. Value noise canceling headphones. So there were a couple of things that went wrong today. I'm watching it. You can do this. Uh, yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. So a couple of things that went wrong today. First of oh. all, the, oh, yeah. the video went up with entirely the wrong title. Um, okay. Yes, we see that there's a little bit of lag on the YouTube stream. We are now sort of way beyond uh, not having an explanation for it because the entire WAN show PC has been swapped out. <laughs> There's a uh, CPU, GPU. Yeah, and it's it's even, we used to be on X264 encoding and now we're on NVENC. Uh, uh, <laughs> like it so couldn't actually be any different than it is now. We are back on the old ethernet cable. Yeah. Also the uh, like retransmitting server, the, yeah. the splitter, uh, there was like some, a little bit of funkery there, but that's all been updated and fixed and worked yeah. on. And was tested for the last half hour on a separate account. Yeah. So it's starting to get to the point where, um, Robert, by the way, no, your super chat is not pre-recorded. So it's starting to get to the point where it's just like not really funny anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're just gonna have to power through the show here, though, guys. Really um, don't know what to do. Realistically, Twitch is probably better. Uh, so you can head over to Twitch and watch there. We still have no explanation for why that would be. Yep. Uh, anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the video that we did today. So this video was called, and this was mistake number one. It was called "Why Is Everybody Buying These Headphones?" Which was actually just one of those complete boneheaded errors, and I'm not gonna throw anyone under the bus, but I think we can all guess who it is that usually makes those particularly egregious errors on the channel, and never actually does get fired because I love him so much. <laughs> um, anyway, someone grabbed the wrong title. I have no idea where it came from. I actually did see that that title was on the pre-release video file, but I didn't really think anything of it. I thought maybe just one of the editors was confused about it and named the file that. And that, like the, the file name is not generally anything to do with the actual name yeah. of the video once we go live. But somehow it ended up with the name of a series that we run on the channel. Why is everybody buying this X that has never been sponsored before? 
whether it's sponsored by the retailer that we got it from or sponsored by the, the, the product that we featured, um, it has never been sponsored before uh, by either of those two parties. Like third party sponsors, sure, you know, your Savage Jerky or whatever the case may be. So that created initially a ton of confusion and a ton of upset because all of a sudden we had a sponsored showcase video. You can see whatever corner it is right there. Sponsored yeah. by Tautronics that seemed to be disguised as editorial content, something that we actually work really hard to not have happen, which is why, thankfully, at least at the beginning, I, ooh, actually, I'm not sure. I believe the word showcase was already in there, but it is supposed to be. So if there's a video that is just like, here's information about a product, but it's sponsored by that company or by that product or by somewhere to get it, it is supposed to be clearly displayed in the title of the video so that you know. And in the video, as as it is down in whatever corner I'm supposed to, oh, it's not even there. That way. My corner. Uh, yeah. Sponsored by Tautron. Okay, so that was problem number one that people had with the video. As soon as Nick was actually the one who spotted it, as soon as Nick saw that the title wasn't right, he had it changed. This is what it was supposed to be. Value noise canceling headphones, Sound Surge 46 Showcase. Okay. Oopsie number So that one. one's pretty straightforward. Whoops, our bad. The other one is a little bit more difficult to address, and I feel like I'm almost gonna have to do a complete video talking about this at some point in the future because there seems to be a lot of confusion in people's minds about the way that we handle our sponsored content. So we made the decision, it must have been about a year ago now, to start doing what we called uh, showcases which are essentially what most of the rest of the industry, that is YouTube personalities, is doing. Where essentially there's some product or some service and there's a sponsorship involved and you're basically given a bullet point list of things to say about it. So our way of reconciling that, because obviously that's not editorial content, that's not, um, you know, my opinion. Um, the way that we reconciled that was, okay, here's the deal, audience. We're gonna do these, but we're gonna do them as extra releases. So you'll notice this video went up on a Friday. So instead of the Linus Tech Tips channel getting six normal videos plus WAN show for a total of seven, that's one every day, it was actually six normal videos plus this one plus WAN show. So there were a total of eight videos. So we didn't want these sponsored showcases, the sponsored content to interfere with our regular upload schedule. We didn't want you guys to feel like you were getting cheated and you were missing out on an editorial or a project-based piece of content because we had decided to do one of these showcases. So that was number one, was yeah. we didn't want it to affect the volume of content that you guys get that is our usual type. Um, number two, was we wanted to separate our opinion, which cannot be purchased, from airtime on our channel, which can be purchased. So when I talk about buying airtime, you are in much the same way that you would sponsor a podcast or a radio show, you are paying for the host to read your talking points, be it about Savage Jerky Ridge Wallet, the Elgato Stream Deck, or you know any number of other other brands and products that have that have sponsored our show. Yeah, I'll sure LTX. <laughs> um, so the distinction then is you can pay for words to be said, but you cannot pay for an opinion. So that's where I feel like people are really allowing the waters to get muddied in their minds between reviews and sponsored videos. So a lot of the complaints about this video, aside from the ones about the title being wrong, and it really was, that was absolutely our mistake and we're sorry, that's our bad. Um, a lot of the complaints are that we didn't give an opinion. This is, this is a, you know, I could, here, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna scroll down and find something here, you know, cause I'm sure it won't be that hard. I mean, okay, here's one that I pinned because I did respond to him. Um, so what other than the requested sponsored talking points can you give us? Anything of your own? Or are you just reading off their marketing material? The answer is, I am reading off their marketing material, and when it comes to any other sponsored piece of content, so are they. That's how it works. 
anytime I were to give you guys an opinion in a sponsored piece of content, I'm not talking about like picking it up. Like, so here's a Ridge wallet. You know, it's made of carbon fiber, feels pretty solid. I am demonstrating that it's solid. Yes, I'm saying it feels pretty solid to me or whatever, but that is a, that is a demonstrable objective fact. It's, it's really well built. That's not really an opinion, even though it's being presented in the form of an opinion. Um, and so anytime we are giving an, if we were to give opinions in our sponsored content, then we create a really awkward and a really dangerous crossover between a review. And that is a word that we use very carefully. A review cannot be sponsored by the subject of the review because there is an inherent obvious conflict of interest that prevents any information in that review from being taken at its face value. So we keep a review separate from a sponsored showcase because yes, that is exactly what a sponsored video is. Now, some sponsors, in fact, Howtronics was one of them, do allow us to give you guys useful information. We did mention some of the more negative points of those headphones in the video. And in fact, we've run into this a lot of the time, especially brands that wear their, their big kid pants and are willing to take criticism, will even allow it in a sponsored video. But what you guys need to understand is that every brand, Tautronics, Cisco, Intel, AMD, Nvidia, anyone that we've ever worked with over the years has a say in a sponsored piece of content. So anything that is in that finished video, and this goes not just for us, but any channel that you watch, at least the ones where at least they disclose it, any channel you watch that does a sponsored video, the brand that sponsored it had a say, and if there was something they didn't like, it was probably removed, depending on the contract. I would say with 98, percent certainty that would have been removed. I mean, there are going to be creators out there that have more power, that have more weight to throw around and say, no, this is my artistic vision, it stays. And we've been able to throw that weight around a fair number of times, but sometimes it doesn't work or the contract isn't favorable or whatever the case may be. So to be clear about it yeah. not working, just because I feel like this could get misconstrued in some way. If it doesn't work, the video just doesn't come out. It's not like he'll say something yep. that he strongly doesn't believe in and release the video anyways, just he's like, well, they strong-armed me, the video just won't come out and the contract will not be made. And that has happened. Yeah, um, uh, like, has 100% happened. Yes. Um, so then, so, you know, addressing a few more of the most upvoted comments here, because I feel like this is a really important topic, not just on our channel, but in general. It's something that's really important for you guys to understand. Um, so why is everyone, okay, no, yeah, sorry, that was about the title, it's uh, super, herb. this is an ad with no actual content, WTF, yes. That's why it says sponsored by Tautronics, and that's why it says showcase in the title, because at the end of the day, that's basically what it is, and the WTF is, this was an extra piece of content, we labeled it with showcase after the fact, and I'm really sorry about that, we labeled it with showcase, if you don't wanna see it, don't watch it. That really is our stance on them. Something I want to throw in personally as a technically outside person on this is I hadn't watched this at all, sat here and watched part of it before the show. There are parts of the video where you criticize it. I know you mentioned yep. this earlier. People are saying there's literally no points that aren't in the sponsor spot. There's like no way that's true because they're not going to put in the sponsor spot, hey, this button is, I don't remember exactly how you word it, but not great and takes a little bit of getting used to. That's not going to be in the sponsor spot. So yep. like... Yeah, I, I hear you guys, but. So this is, this is another really great example right here of exactly the mentality that we need to, we need to kill. Um, I don't mind sponsored videos, but this was just a four minute ad. There was no review or anything. If it's sponsored, there is no review, period. That's not how these contracts work. And you don't want them to work that way. No, you don't. You want reviews to be really, really clearly separated from anything that is sponsored in a way that could create a conflict of interest. Absolutely. Um, That's like very important. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, most of the complaints, 
Probably the most blatant clickbait title I've seen. Nobody, not a single soul. Linus, everybody is buying these. And that's like, that's like, fair, because the original title really is, is crazy. I, I will throw another defend in that yeah. Linus Media Group has published, like, what, thousands of videos at this point. There's going to be oopsies in titles every once in a while. It's yeah. still bad. This one is particularly it's bad. It's still particularly because bad. Because it wasn't just... It didn't sort of. It didn't just violate our own standards for what constitutes clickbait. Yeah. Uh, it it violates our our editorial. Standards. Oh, it's bad. All I'm saying okay. is people will make mistakes. So we're clear that it's bad. Oh, it's bad. It's really bad. Um, but like I wouldn't. And pointing it out, you know what? Solid because it needs to be pointed out so that it gets changed, etc., etc., etc. But like I don't know. I I'd, I'd measure your pitchforkedness because. It was changed quickly. Oh, surprise, Luke is defending LMG. Well, no crap. I think it's also very reasonable. Um, there was a mistake. They understood it was a mistake. They changed the title. These showcase content has been happening forever. Uh, there are legitimate criticisms within a showcase video, which, in my opinion, is marginally above and beyond. Um, I mean, there were a couple of things that we felt were really important to mention. Um, yeah. Like the fact that, you know what? They sound pretty darn good. I'm not being sponsored right now. I can say whatever the hell I want. They sound pretty darn good, but not at full volume. Someone mentioned so that in the sure comments. Mention that. I hadn't seen that part of the video, but yeah, someone mentioned yeah. that in Twitch chat that you guys said that as well. Like that's there. There was extra stuff added on top. So we we mentioned the main drawbacks to them. Like to be clear, they're fine. We wouldn't have taken the deal if we thought they were a bad deal. Also, there's a bunch of content, yep. especially earlier on, where yep. if you watch Linus's videos from quite a long time ago when we used to do more headphone coverage, yep. mostly unboxings, he's mirroring the same comments. These are opinions he's had for a long time. Not that opinions shouldn't be able to yep. change over time, but like a lot of the things that you said were not surprising to me, yep. because I remember holding a dinky camera and listening to you say the same stuff. Now, I have had people upset, um, particularly about the fact that I didn't ream on it for having a micro B USB port. Mm. So, I can explain why that would be. Um, the cost to implement USB Type-C is significantly higher. Um, not just in terms of the actual solder connections, because there are more of them and yeah. they're finer. Um, but in terms of the R&D, because it is a more complex standard. Um, by complex standard, I mean it is like many different standards, many of which don't uh, necessarily work properly with each other. Building a device that charges over USB Type-C is not trivial, and there's a reason that even large companies like Logitech are still shipping gaming mice with USB micro-B connectors. Now, with someone like Logitech, um, I have less sympathy because Luke has personally visited their R&D facilities. I think they can figure out how to put a USB Type-C connector on yeah, something. Yeah, they're kind of amazing, actually. With Tautronics, given the price point and given the fact that what is a device point? like this would not have as clear a benefit from Type-C as some others would, like a mouse in particular. Now, Logitech mitigates this somewhat by putting reinforcements around their Type-C connectors at the end of their mice so that it doesn't put as much strain on it. But with a device like a mouse, where you're actually moving it around while it's charging sometimes, there's a clear and obvious reason to use a more durable connector like a Type-C. This is a pair of headphones that you'll probably charge once every few days for a span of a couple years until you lose them or whatever. So Micro-B, yeah, it's not as good, but it doesn't need fast charging over Type C. Like it doesn't need, you know, 30 watt charging or anything crazy like that. Um, it would be more convenient to not have to carry an extra cable, but they are a value option as opposed to a, you know, 199 or 299 pair of active noise canceling headphones. So I was willing to be, um, I was willing to not ream on it. And there's no way, again, remember, this is a sponsored piece of content. There's no way I was going to be able to ream on it hard because this is a sponsored piece of content. So why wasn't it in there? Because given the context, I was willing to not ream on it, and I wouldn't have been able to ream on it anyway. Um, all right. Well, I think uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Yeah. Oh, speaking of all I have to say about that, I ate at Bubba Gump's for the first time ever yesterday. Bubba Gump's? 
Yeah. So, oh, down in okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I actually, I and while I was sitting there, I didn't. It's uh, random. Yeah. Well, I was down in LA for a meeting that was to do with VidCon, but I wasn't at VidCon because I left before VidCon started. That sounds like the best way to do VidCon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like hands down. <laughs> it was kind of amazing. I had like the best meeting ever. I, I'm I'm so bad with names, and I'm really embarrassed. Um, and so this sucks. But uh, CGP Gray was there. Uh, Tom Scott was there. Um, YouTube's head of search and discoverability was there, which was wow. really important. Yeah. And there were definitely some key insights that this is not the kind of meeting that I can go and like make a YouTube video about and tell you guys all about. But it was it was really good to just be able to have that kind of open discussion around the dinner table. Um, there was. Uh, I think her first name's Rebecca. She's absolutely huge. She does kids content. Um, okay. I forget her last name, Zamolo, Zamalo, something like that. Um, there was a guy who has a really cool channel that's like tips for creators. Um, there was the guy who did the, uh, the arcade, arcade tricks or like arcade cheats or something like that. Arcade hacks. Um, um, cheats or something. What's his? Oh, what's his name? Shoot. Rebecca Zamalo. Yeah, yeah, that's her. Yeah, so cool. she's. It's not the kind of content that I think you folks would necessarily enjoy, but um, she's super popular. Yeah. Uh, dang it! I can't. I can't find. I can't find him right now. Uh, nobody is. Nobody is helping me in the chat. Mark Robert, Mark Rober, Mark Rober. He was oh, there. Okay. Arcade Scam Science. That's yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was there. So it was like, honestly, I felt kind of B-list. <laughs> 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 um, but I think I got an invite just because I cornered one of their execs at, um, at the Top Creator Summit and was like asking a bunch of questions. And he was just like, we're thinking of having like a dinner. Do you want to just <laughs> come to that and talk to these people directly? Um, so it's really cool. I'm finally getting to the point where we have like a real relationship with YouTube. Actually, one of the, one of the people who was there um, got to launch a popular product for the first time in pretty much forever, and that leads really perfectly into one of our topics for today. Oh, um, so the head of uh, Content ID was actually at dinner. Oh, yeah, this is cool. Yeah, OK. Um, yeah, so the original article here is from the YouTube uh, creator's blog. And uh, he was really excited about this. So Content ID now requires claimants to provide more information and provides better. Oh. There go a bunch of disc plates. That's fine. <laughs> okay, cool. I mean, hey, that's the benefit of durable aluminum wall hangings. <laughs> you can trip and throw them all over the floor, and they'll still be okay. They'll still be yeah. all right. Are they bent? Uh, no way. Okay, cool. No, no, it's fine. Don't, don't. Yeah, it fine. wasn't it's fine. wasn't that bad. Didn't sound that bad. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so better, uh, so better uh, tools to resolve manual content ID claims. So this actually would have solved that drama problem that we had a while back. Yeah. Where. Oh. Our content ID system through our MCN was claiming anyone's video that had, I think it was either Unigen Valley or Unigen Heaven benchmark in it, because we had lots of videos with that first, apparently. And then other people uploaded footage, and it went, eh, that's Linus Media Group's content. And then they had their video's content ID claimed, which, to be <laughs> clear, is not the same thing as a copyright strike. Yeah. And is actually no big deal. Once you get it resolved, there's no long-term lasting damage. You don't even lose your AdSense. Um, anyway. Um, now, it's way easier to resolve these things. So in the past, the copyright claim system had been abused and used to extort creators in some cases. Um, so manual claiming is a tool within Content ID that allows you to do things like go, uh, hey, YouTube's automated system didn't find this six notes of our song and um, you know, automatically flag it. So we're going to go in, we're going to manually say, hey, that's from our song. We actually had this happen a while back with um, a monitor video. We had like a meme, and it was basically like, da 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 da. And like it was really that short. 
And the owner of that song came in, they've created their own tools for <laughs> combing through videos. They came in, they claimed our entire video based on this like six to eight notes of music or whatever it was. And the way that a, co uh, a copyright claim works is that once someone else claims your video, the video stays up, you lovely folks still get to enjoy it, but all of the money that gets made through AdSense on that video goes to that copyright holder even if they had nothing to do with 99.5% of the video content. And it was just that. All of the money goes to them, which is obviously not a perfect system, but I also understand why it would be that way because you know, you can't just you can't just grab like, you know, an iconic song like ACDC Highway to Hell or something and use, you know, five to 10 seconds of it in every one of your videos and expect that that's okay because you didn't create that. That's not yours. It doesn't yeah. work that way. Yeah. And you also can't just tell ACDC, well, hey, these guys put three hours of black frames at the end of their video, <laughs> which makes you effectively 0.02% oh. of the content. So here's your 0.02% of the AdSense. That's not fair either because clearly you, the creator, felt you were significantly enhancing your piece of content by stealing someone else's work, or you wouldn't have included it. I mean, in that case, you definitely did. <laughs> um, sorry, you definitely did what? If you put three hours of black frames. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're definitely abusing yeah. the system. Um, and you're significantly enhancing your content. Yeah. So, so anyway, um, to combat... At, so, so this is, this is a move in the creator's direction after a lot of previous moves that appeared to be designed to help copyright holders enforce their copyright to a degree that I, as a YouTuber, felt was unfair. We ended up having to edit that video and re-upload it without that meme in it because giving someone else all the AdSense from a, a video that we spend a lot of time and money creating for their couple seconds of, of music yeah. just doesn't make any sense to us. So now, uh, here's what's here's what's going on. So content ID can work automatically by scanning a blah blah blah. Okay, so um, hmm. Okay, Jono's notes on this are not amazing, but basically, starting today, and I think that's two days ago, three days ago, they are requiring copyright owners to provide timestamps to indicate exactly where their content appears in the videos that they manually claim. Which is nice. This was a big problem. Good start. Like in that video. I watched through the entire video without actually realizing what the problem was. All I could see was that it had been claimed by some music conglomerate. And I was like, what, what are you talking about? So I, I messaged our editor. I went, yo, WTF, what happened here? Are, aren't we using all, I think we were on uh, Warner Chapel at yeah. the time. Like, aren't we using all licensed music that we, we have rights for? And they go, yeah. And then someone finally clued in, I think it was actually a comment on the video that alerted us to this, that that, that meme was from a song, like that little portion of it. And um, so, so it wasted a bunch of our time when the claimant could have just said, hey, this is the problem. Now they don't wanna do that because that's not actually the outcome they're after. Think about it from their perspective. Would they rather have you quickly edit their crap out of your video or would they rather take your money in, in the they get 100% of it kind of scheme, they definitely just want the money. Scheme is definitely the right word here. Yeah. Um, so they have to provide timestamps now for exactly which part of your video is manually being claimed, and YouTube is providing their editing tools to remove the content claimed manually in your video, which will now automatically release the claims. This isn't going to solve all problems. No. But it should be way more helpful than what they have now. Yeah, so cool. right now you've got a few different options. You can mute all sound when the claimed song plays. You can replace the song if you don't want to mute the audio entirely. Uh, so you can instead swap out the music with one of their free-to-use songs from the YouTube Audio Library. Um, although that might not necessarily be a perfect solution. We actually had someone yeah. claim a YouTube Audio Library uh, song once because the performance was licensed by YouTube, but the actual original sheet music was still copyrighted in Germany of all places, anyway. <laughs> or you can trim out the content. So you can just cut it out and then an edited version will show up on YouTube after the fact. And they are still working on improvements like having an explicit trim option in the video copyright info page that'll allow you to trim it out with just one click. 
And uh, remember, of course, that the same tools from before where you could dispute these claims do still exist. If you think the claim is incorrect or covered under fair use or just completely irrelevant like those Unigen Valley and Unigen Heaven claims, you can just say, hey, this is invalid. Here's the reason I think so. And we've actually found that most of the time, um, like WAN show, uh, we've been flagged on WAN show a lot of times back when we used to show game trailers. Yeah. Uh, we've been flagged by the game trailer owners, and I'm kind of sitting here going, you effing serious, mate? So dumb. You're going to take our money for promoting your... Sorry we advertised yeah, for you. Yeah, sorry for the free promotion, <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> um, so we've actually disputed those in the past, saying, I'm sure this was an accident. No one in their right mind at Nintendo would be mad that oh, we showed their trailer. Nintendo definitely gets salty about that. Um, I actually do think that Nintendo was one that I'm did not release it. And I'm, I'm sure they were. I'm looking at it going like, you guys are just idiots because we are just never, ever, ever going to talk about one of your new games again. They're getting Good job. slightly better at this they over time. They do seem time, to be getting slightly better. But like, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, how stupid do you have to be to get <laughs> mad at someone for promoting a trailer for your content? This is an awesome looking game! Check it out! Flagged. Then again, we might not have said it looked awesome. We probably fairness. did, it's a Nintendo game. We probably did. We're like, both they're basically all awesome. Yeah. Um, on the subject of Nintendo, one more topic before we do our sponsors. Uh, Switch yeah. Lite, yay or nay? Yay, absolutely. You yay. know what? You know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna tempt the gods. Oh, jeez. Here it is. Oh, no. Here it is. Oh, no. Ready? No, wait. No, I bet. Uh, no, hard it's hard just mail. Oh, hard mail. No, nope, forget it. Good nope. call. We'll see if his shoe takes the whole video. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll yeah. see if we give up all of our AdSense over that. What do you think? Do you disagree with me? Um, I, don't, I, I wasn't listening. I was busy being Oh, busy. I said yay. You said yay. Yeah. Why? Uh, it's considerably cheaper. It's $100 cheaper. And it's effectively a 3DS replacement. Okay. Which, like... They weren't going to keep going with 3DS, mm -hmm. and we've known that for a long time. Okay. So I'm going to say it's complicated. Okay. I see we're going here. Okay. So go ahead. Yep, yep, yep. These prices are all over the place for one, so I'm not 100% sure what's going on there. The one that I saw that's price competitive with the Switch Lite, mm -hmm. I would be concerned about. Used Switches are a little bit sketchy. That's true, because they could be blacklisted. Screen, uh, they could be blacklisted. Yep. They have an exposed screen. Yep. Uh, it's fairly likely for the screens to be scratched, yep. especially if people were not very careful, careful with docking them. Yep. And that's going to be something that might be a little bit visually hard to tell in an eBay ad. Uh, it has a not very easily user-replaceable battery. Yep. So I would be a little bit concerned about that. Um, and I don't think the fact that you can eBay something that is used for a comparable price that a new thing is like null and void no but maybe an enthusiast can take a it factor in a purchasing decision for me i'm not going to purchase a switch light okay i think it's cool that it's on the market here's my other main problem yeah that's bestbuy.com so that's u.s pricing sure um so to me Effectively, what Nintendo has done here is they've knocked $100 off the price, and you're getting the same gaming hardware, so you're going to have the same gaming experience that you had, at least on mobile anyway. The battery life is a little longer. Is it? As far as I know. Oh, it's an updated chipset, I think. It's a new Tegra chip. I believe so. But so I, the battery life is yeah. a little bit longer. The controllers are fixed, so yes. they're stuck on the side, and I believe the screen's a little smaller? Uh, I don't know about the screen. I'm not sure. Um, but, okay, so here's my problem, is they dropped $100 off the price. Yes, that's nice. But you are giving up a lot. You're and giving up TV docking yeah. and removable controllers. Some of it you have the ability to get back. Like, for example, there are games that you cannot play on the Switch Lite, like Mario Party, for example. Mario Party requires Joy-Cons. So if you, you can connect Joy-Cons to a Switch Lite. Of course you can. For $70. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. But you said you cannot play. So now you've spent $270. It is another $30, 30 bucks to get the one that just has all the functionality. That's where I run into trouble. This is a, this is a console that is a Switch, it's no, but it doesn't offer all the same experiences. It's more like a okay. Game Boy. It's not really a console. Yes. It doesn't dock. I know. You can't play it on TV. I know. I know. It's not I'm just really designed. I hear you. It's not really designed for Mario Party. For 30 bucks, 
uh, look, I've I've played more Mario Party on the Switch portably than I have on my TV. Oh, that's kind of weird. On the plane. Why do you play Mario Party on the? You play Mario Party by yourself? No, with some with someone. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I play that that's Mario Party on the plane. That's a fairly small use case. Okay, that's a niche use. I case. don't disagree with you. But but. There, I mean, there's other. Nintendo acknowledged in their announcement that you can't play it one won't play Switch. all of them. Yeah. Yep. Like there are games it won't play. You got to check the back of the game. You got to see if it supports handheld mode, and if it yeah. doesn't, you are. I think plum the vast fresh out majority of, of games are going to support it. Yeah, especially Mario moving Party, forward. Mario Party is a good one to call out because that's yep. a fairly major. It's I don't a know how many party people. Game. It's a lot of fun. Yes. I don't know how many people are into one-two Switch. Yeah, kind of a trash game. No, Mario Party is Mario far Party's more important pretty major. To me. Yes, I will give you that. And if for I sure. have to run out and spend seventy dollars on top of the fact, so here's another problem that I have: first-party Nintendo games are freaking expensive. So yes. when we're talking about the price difference between a Switch and a Switch Lite, we're talking one and a half games. Yeah, but at the same time, like if you're a kid, that one and a half games might be too much. Yeah, that's and fair. And then you should probably go buy a, you should probably go try to very much snipe a good deal on a used Switch somewhere else. I do agree with that. Not everyone's going to do that. A not lot of moms are stuff. not going to buy you a used Switch. A lot of moms are not comfortable buying used stuff for their kid who, you know, even if they're like a, like, I, you know, I get this story all the time. Like, hey, Linus, my mom won't let me buy a used GPU on eBay because she says it's 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 sketchy. I know it's a good deal. It's like it it's it's one of those brands that still has that has a user transferable warranty. It's literally still under warranty. Help me convince her. And I'm like, look, dude, there's nothing I can do to help convince you. I couldn't convince my parents. You're yeah. not gonna be able to convince yours, I bet. Yeah. My my mom was pretty cool about that. We my brother and I raised money and she drove us to buy a SNES from nice. some dude in a parking lot nice. when I was like eleven or something. Um, but like, but not everyone's down with that. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's a smoking deal. I don't think it's amazing. I think it has a place though. Right. A lot of people aren't going to buy you. Some people might want to just play Fire Emblem and Smash and literally nothing else. But if you're like, okay. People will buy a device for that. People Smash, will buy a console. Just mobile. You don't want to dock it. People will buy a console. No. Well, Smash what if, is invalid. What if not docking? You're invalid. What if not, no, you're invalid. What if not go, docking go. is... I can't even push them. <laughs> what okay, if not Brandon, docking the device Brandon, is not a problem? Brandon, please. I am come on. He's, come on. Okay. Come on, come this on. is interesting. Okay, so, okay. so Brandon, you're a bit of a Smash enthusiast. Yes, I like Smash. Would and you? Fire Emblem. <laughs> I, I said like those games specifically <laughs> because of Brandon. Okay. <laughs> So we're talking Switch versus Switch Lite right now. Okay. So do you know do you know about the Switch yes, Lite? Yes, I know about the Switch Lite. Of course you do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> obviously we all do. Um, okay. So at a hundred dollar Delta. Okay. Is the Switch Lite a deal? I didn't say it's a smoking deal. I said it had a place. I think it has. Yeah, I think I agree with Luke. I think it has its place. Okay. Like, so if you were someone who's only going to play Fire Emblem and Smash, yes. is it not worth the extra hundred dollars to be able to dock? This isn't fair because Brandon has a sweet couch <laughs> I just and a really nice bought a TV. Switch. <laughs> I literally bought a Switch like last week when before the Switch Lite came out. Now, thinking back to that decision that I made yeah. last week, I'd still make this. I was nice. going to say I think he would buy still a full go one. For a but again, he has a nice TV yeah, and a right. really awesome couch. A lot of people don't have for that. All, right, like, but you don't need to have a TV. Use your monitor. You can absolutely. Sure. There's so many monitors. But a lot of people are just gonna want to like chill in bed, play on their thing. Do I whatever. see. They do. They not have friends. A lot of kids don't have uh, a a. Yeah. Do they not have friends. Why? It's a valid question. <laughs> it's fair, but like I. Who plays I just, Smash by themselves? Sometimes that hundred dollar Delta will be too much That's to true. overcome. But then I, I stand by my argument that, that you should go buy a used but Switch. But some then. people can't. Because you're gonna, you're, okay, you might not need Joy-Cons eventually. But, I, okay, here's another thing too. Like if you wanna talk resale value, the Switch oh, is gonna more. hold its value. It's gonna yeah. hold some of that value when it's time to flip it and get a Switch 2 to or Switch fair, Pro or whatever. To be fair, basically all Nintendo products hold value very well. And and the accessories Except in particular. Except for like the weird so, accessories for, for original Wii. Some okay, of those, so maybe not. I, I was picking, no, they, some of them not bad. Like the tennis racket things? Okay, stuff? no, no, not that stuff. That's what I but meant. But I'm talking like Wiimotes. Yeah, like, yeah, well, yeah. Wii Motion yeah. Plus Wiimotes still hold value. Yeah. The Wii U, I was picking up a Wii U a little while ago because one of our Wii's 
like was having some kind of issue and I was like, oh, you know what, forget it. Let's just get a Wii U anyway and then I can do that data transfer thing and then I don't have to worry about the Wii dying and taking all my, uh, you know, classic arcade, whatever, these uh, virtual console games with it and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So we got it and I was like shocked at how much a Wii U still costs because, be because of the way that Nintendo manages their IP and they have these unique games, these also unique the, gaming experiences. The Wii U tablet controller still feels amazing. Yeah, so they've got these yes. unique experiences that are available. They're, they're consoles hold their value. I would make the argument that a Switch Lite is going to go like <laughs> that compared to a Switch, which will still hold some value. Comparatively, I, I still think it'll hold this value better than a lot of things. Yeah. But yeah, I do agree with that in general. I think, um, I do think, like, I think you're maybe underestimating the $100 Delta. Yeah, I think for a lot of kids, that's a really big deal. It's big. My problem is that's that potentially a year. Or two. But it's gonna bite you later. It's but gonna no bite one... you when you need Joy Cons. It's gonna bite but it's, you when you have to. It's also going flip... to eventually go on sale, get comboed with a game, okay. something like that. Okay, now that's a different conversation. If it comes with Fire Emblem and it's like <laughs> two twenty nine. <laughs> Now we're talking a two game difference in price, but right now it is a one and a half game difference right, yeah, in price. Yeah, right now, but it's that, I think that's still significant enough to make people yeah. accept these sacrifices. Sure. Yeah, they are, they are sacrifices in a lot of cases. The increased battery life is really nice, and that might be enough for some people, because charging the Switch is actually a huge pain. It is, um, I've already noticed this. The Switch being fully mobile is actually very annoying. It is? Yeah. How's it a pain? Charging the Switch is, his battery life is not very good. Yeah, his battery life is terrible. Yeah, but I mean, okay, so maybe I maybe I'm a unique case. So here. now you're throwing in I surprisingly expensive battery banks. Whoa, 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 hold on a second. I find okay, so let me think first. You a know second. what though? One thing I, I use my laptop charger, so I carry one USB Type C. Yeah. I carry my razor blade stealth laptop charger, which does my phone, my switch, and my laptop. And they all last for long enough that I don't need so to plug this, all three of them. So now this kid that was barely able to save up for it <laughs> Look, has a razor blade no. with a USB-C charging I'm just card. saying, I haven't found charging the device to be a problem. Yeah. It's a little awkward. Though. A lot of people who buy a Switch Lite are not going to go along and also buy a lot of the stuff that you need to make, like, that could make the Switch t TV version better. That's true, but and so like yeah. a Switch Lite is a good solution because like they're not gonna spend like because I think I I spent like another hundred dollars on little things like oh, yeah. SD cards and like like a pro controller yeah like like yeah. Oh, no, people God. who buy the Switch Lite aren't gonna buy that so that's the thing when you buy a Switch yeah. for the t for your TV you're buying a lot of other stuff on top of that yeah a lot of the time over time and yeah. like a Switch Lite you just kind of and buy you're trying it and to like you just play right away okay, somewhat sure. bridge the gap. <laughs> All right, thanks, Brennan. By buying some of those things, like additional controllers and stuff, and I think you have to assume if you're going for a Switch Lite, you're probably buying nothing in addition other than games. All right, well that's fair enough. So you're in. You're go the plan is to invest a lot less in the ecosystem. And if I was a parent, maybe I'd get my kids a Switch Lite so that they don't have to ask me for a Pro Controller. The <laughs> and, answer's already known. And honestly, that might sell a bunch of these. If the people are, are educated enough in the ecosystem to go like, okay, yeah, it can't connect to the TV. It can't do all these other things. Or if I don't want my kids on my TV. Or that. So, okay, it, all right. I think it has a place. I don't think it's a stunning value. Right. I don't think people should run out and buy it right now because it's amazing. I think if you're interested, I would probably wait until it gets bundled with a game. With a game. Yeah. With a game, okay. Without a game, I think it's a, I think it's a tough sell for me. I don't because think it's a great deal. I don't like... I think it's interesting. I don't like saving a dollar so that I can spend two later. Okay, but 100 US dollars when you were 13. Yeah, it's a lot of money. But when and I know I was, you probably would have bounced when around, I was and 13, I probably would have done the same thing. I bought low, sold high. I was flipping stuff on Craigslist. Like, yeah. I was hustling. Yeah. So I had I, a job. I don't like. So I don't like, feel bad. Yeah. For people that can't raise a hundred dollars because they're like too right. young to Neither find do a I, side hustle. Because again, I had a job, but uh, I, I can understand why they might want to buy something. Now, to be cheaper, clear, that thing I just limited. said just now could sound very out of touch. To be clear, I don't feel bad for like suburban, lower to upper, oh, upper middle class kids yeah. that can't scrape Whoa. together a hundred dollars. If you um, came from where we came from. Yes, then you should be able to. Yeah. But if you're someone who is in a situation where like you can't, 
you don't even have time to go to school because you are like working to support your family at 12 or whatever. That's a completely different situation. I wasn't supporting my family with my job. I was yeah. buying EverQuest subscriptions and, <laughs> and video games. So I just want to make sure that that's really clear. Yes. Um, that could so, be uh, just, just, just for those of you who are tuning in late, we have no idea why the stream is lagging on YouTube. It's fine on Twitch. It is literally uh, exactly the same stream. So. It actually still lags a little bit on Twitch, but it is considerably better. Oh, okay. Twitch. So, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll have to figure that out later. Yeah. Uh, we think it's haunted. Um, just wanted to run through Ghost the sponsors for you guys. Holy crap, we are 45 minutes into the show, and we haven't talked about Ooh. sponsors. Anthony, did you want to jump in with something? You, you were kind of standing there patiently. Yeah, I was just going to say that the, uh, the 199 price for the Switch Lite yeah. is basically what the 3DS used to cost when it first came out. Right. So to me, that means that it's the new 3DS. Okay, yeah, and Luke said that. Yeah, like to me, it's I would buy it because it's more portable. It is smaller. Oh, it is smaller. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's small. It's less likely. How much smaller? Like, my Joy-Cons don't stick really it's well like anymore. A, like a six point something to 5.5 inch, so, like, it's actually a smaller Okay, device. so it's quite it's a like bit smaller. Basically, so like, a little bit larger than a Vita. But it's okay. So, okay, so it's still, like, sort of pocketable. Uh, depending on no. the size of your pocket. Yeah, I mean, you'd need my, a pretty epic pocket. My no, pockets are I don't huge. think so. Uh, maybe. It yeah. takes my entire hand. Yeah, you probably yeah, the big boy pockets, up to like here. <laughs> Alright, Mr. Big Boy Pockets here. <laughs> um, <laughs> I got them right. thick pockets. Sponsors for today, Seasonic. Seasonic's <laughs> yes, we're doing it, Nick. Um Seasonic has lots of fantastic power supply <laughs> products uh, featuring Features like, wow, these are really confusing things. Okay, so uh, they have up to 80 plus titanium efficiency, the highest, or is this a specific SKU we're talking about? Yes, it is, but it's not in here. Dang it, you guys. <laughs> um, where's uh, the, is it, they, is it here? Okay, I blame. I don't think so. I blame Jono and Colton. So some, there's some product from Seasonic. <laughs> 80 plus titanium efficiency. Um, so that's between 91 and 94 percent efficiency at all times. Um, it has their Lambda Noise Level A plus plus, so the noise output stays below 20 decibels during operation. It's got a fluid dynamic bearing fan <laughs> uh, with premium hybrid fan control, so the fan actually turns off when it's under a uh, very low load. It's got their micro tolerance load regulation. Uh, it comes with a 12 year warranty and you can check it out at Seasonic's website or at Amazon in the link in the video description. Is Jono looking for it? Are you looking for the power supply that is the sponsor for today? Oh, no, we, we use it for a video. Oh, we used it for a video. Yeah. The link to... Is okay. it Prime okay, Titanium? Okay. Seasonic Prime Titanium 850. I went through the link and yeah. found it. We have platinum. All right. Uh, also sponsoring the show today, Ridge Wallet. Oh, that's funny. I was talking about how Ridge Wallet might be a sponsor, and then they were. I guess that's why it's sitting here. I thought maybe someone just left it here. No. So the Ridge Wallet lets you stop carrying pointless garbage around in your pocket. Receipts, old hotel room keys, spent gift cards, all that kind of stuff. If you don't have the space for it, then it's a little bit easier to break the habit. So the Ridge Wallet is designed with two metal plates that are bound by a strong elastic band to keep your cards tightly together, but still easily accessible. They've got a uh, belt clip on them, or you can just slip it into your pocket. It's actually pretty smooth, so you're not going to have you're not going to find it like getting caught on things if you decide not to use the clip. And they are lifetime guaranteed. They're also RFID blocking, so you, they can't people can't use like those card skimmers in order to uh, grab your data out of your pocket. But I will say I'm going to interject here for one yep. second. Uh, if you need RFID to access something. Yeah, the way Tape that it to you the eject... outside of your Ridge Wallet. Well, no, no, no. The, the way that oh. you eject cards is actually really simple. And if you just put that card on the edge, mm. you just shove it out with your thumb, tap, shove it back in, and you're done. It's actually faster, in my opinion, than, than many normal wallets. They come in different materials, like aluminum, carbon fiber, and titanium, and they're a great gift for Father's Day, which is a month ago. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I noticed that. I noticed there. that. <laughs> uh, so you can use offer code LTT at ridgewallet.com slash LTT, and you can save 10% on Next. your... It's actually a cash clip. Very own Ridge Wallet. Cash clip. It's a cash clip. That's it's a, oh, that's a cash clip. Well, whatever. I would use it. I've used clip. it as a belt clip. Yeah. And it worked great. Uh, okay. Yeah, there we go. In other news, Savage Jerky is also Heck sponsoring yeah. the show today and I actually still have a little bit of sriracha bacon left over. Where are you going? Oh, we've got the hot sauce. I'm showing their other 
fantastic product. So their jerky is made with high quality ingredients without nitrates or preservatives with the goal of creating a snack that is full of flavor and spice that isn't bad for you. I was actually doing some research on nitrates. They're really bad. Yeah. I had like hadn't really thought about it much before, but so nitrates uh, make it much faster to age meat and get that desirable, delicious looking color. Um, but they're a carcinogen, which is cool. Well, also we have a lot of meat. Well, actually, no, sorry, just to be clear, the, the nitrates are not the carcinogen. It's the reaction between the nitrates and something something that creates a carcinogen. So they've got 13 different flavors of jerky, like their sriracha bacon and their maple buffalo bacon, which I love. That one's got a little bit more kick than the maple buffalo. I kind of went down the wrong pipe. I'm good though. They also make barbecue sauce, hot sauce, and a spice rub. And uh, I love their hot sauce. Man, their hot sauce is amazing. It's like really good. You guys should check it out. It's um, incredible. Use offer code LTT to save 10% on all their products at the link below. All right, do we have any other important topics today? I kind of feel like we covered all the... Uh, like really important stuff. The major things. The Google employees secretly oh. listening in thing is pretty interesting. Nah, we got to talk about the um, the PCIe Gen 4 compatibility drama. I want to throw in a thing for this really quick at some point. Oh, I don't sure. have to do okay, it now. Okay, let's do it now. Let's do it now. Okay, um, so Google employees secretly listening in. We don't really have to go into this too deeply, in my opinion. Um, there's Google employees that are listening in to um, Google Home data and listening to conversations, including conversations that were definitely not intentionally triggered. Um, I'm sure this is happening with all of them. I was talking to Wendell at uh, Computex. Computex. Yeah. We talked about a ton of stuff. Wendell's an amazing person. It was very fun hanging out with him. But uh, one of the things we started talking about is there's uh, someone has designed, or a group of people, I, I don't remember, sorry. I didn't remember the story until I saw this, this exact topic. But they designed this 3D printed housing that you can put on, I believe it was for an Alexa, but you could probably put it on a, you could probably modify it to go on a Google Home as well, that like covers it and then has a little, I believe if I remember correctly, it has a little speaker in it that constantly blares noise at it. And it's called a brain, well, I, it's playfully called a brain slug because that plays onto something from a show that I don't remember and people can get really mad at me, but I think it's Rick and Morty. Um, so basically it's constantly blasting like white noise. Is that Futurama? Futurama might be, oh, I think it's Futurama, yeah. Uh, it's constantly blasting white noise, and the brain slug is now listening for you, but it's all local stuff. It doesn't call out to external servers. So if you say the keyword that the brain slug wants to hear, the brain slug will stop blasting noise, and then you can talk to your automation device. Wow. And that's actually awesome. That is next level. I think that is so cool, and I've, I've wanted to make one for a while, even though I don't run these devices, I just want to make one because I think they're cool. Um, so, and I probably screwed some th things up, and I'm sorry, Wendell and whoever made that project, but super cool. So, this is pretty funny. Um, Google's defense of this behavior was that only 0.2% of all audio clips are being used. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a huge amount. <laughs> That's one in every 500. That, that like, means I guarantee, like not technically guaranteed, but it is extremely likely that I have something in here of me going, set a reminder for, but... You know, my herpes appointment or whatever, right? Like, <laughs> no. But that's the thing. Okay, Luke has a highly recognizable voice. So yeah. let's say that he did set an embarrassing reminder or something like that, even if he was intending to talk to his assistant. Yeah. It's a personal assistant. Yeah. Not a, hey... I'd love for someone in uh, in a data center somewhere to really like listen to this and go, wow, is that Luke Lafreniere? The conversation with Wendell came up because I was talking about how I don't like these services because I would love to have something local. And how a long time ago I had spun up this project to try to uh, mesh together a whole bunch of microphones in my house and have them dictate to a file that I was going to be constantly reading to see for my own keywords and triggering events on my own and all this kind of stuff. But it was quite a long time ago, and he, he actually said there's a bunch of projects that I would be able to use to accomplish it a lot easier now, which is very cool. Again, talking to Wendell is always fantastic. But um, that's how we got onto this thing, because these are so, they're so creepy. Uh, Nick, you've been standing here very patiently. Do you want to talk to the, uh, the WAN show? Yeah, I mean, for a minute I thought you were going to say, Luke has herpes. <laughs> not Luke I mean, has a recognizable voice. Not that I know of. <laughs> um, have you talked about your super Sorry. fashionable t-shirt that you're wearing? No, I haven't yet. Oh, well that's now the top selling t-shirt in the lightest tech oh! store! Really? Yeah. Above hard drive? I actually like hard drive better. Hard drive's only been on sale half as long. Oh, okay. 
Uh, yeah, so there you go. Processor t-shirt. It's for sale. It's really nice. I really like it. There's, al there's also this one. Yeah, you can also get the elemental <laughs> shirts, which uh, don't sell very well. Yeah, this shirt exists. Yeah. Check Alter it out. Alternatively, we're going to have those two for 30 at LTX. Hard nice. drive is hard drive's pretty yeah. awesome. I really like this one. Um, what else is there to say? We're out of stock of most of the sizes of stealth hoodie. Are we out of all of them? There's only one. There's one stealth. The there's one stealth hoodie in stock. Well, it says sold out online. So yeah. uh, they'll yeah. be back in stock next yeah. week. They'll be back next week, and uh, hopefully by next week we will also be launching our underwear. Oh yeah. yeah. Do you want some underwear? Yes. Yeah, I bet you do. I've already told them. I think you, I think you'll take anything free. Oh yeah. Yes. So can I pitch you something crazy? Okay. To promote the launch of the underwear. Yeah. We do the show naked. Oh, but wearing God. underwear. <laughs> Are we like standing? No. So so they, we'll look they can't naked. see them anyways then. That's fine. Are we gonna ban from Twitch? I don't know. Oh yeah, nipples. Well, you, uh, oh, how does that work? We could tape over them. So we could paint them. We could paint. We could, <laughs> we could paint them. We could wear. That's a whole section. Of we could the wear bras. <laughs> oh my God, we could wear bras. We could wear bras. Okay, but hold on a second. I, I need to know how this works. It's actually important because you're mm. a Twitch partner. So yes. if you show your nipples on so someone you. else's channel, oh, does that else? affect yeah. your channel? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if like Doctor Disrespect showed up on Linus Tech yeah. and was like streaming in the bathroom or whatever. He'd get That's on him, not me. Temporarily banned for. Cool. Oh, it's on both of us. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Just, just, just clearing the air here. Just clearing the air. So here. bras. All right. So bras might be the answer. I think. Actually, you're not even gonna be here next week. Oh, you're not here next week. Okay, next week then. We'll find a time. Oh, um. Yeah. All we'll right. Do it Asus publishes X470 and B450 Gen 4 compatibility chart. So. Um. Let's see. What? Do we, uh, this was posted by CB Forum member on the Linus Tech Tips Forum. And basically, AMD's official position about PCI Express Gen 4 compatibility has been that only X570 and their Ryzen 3rd Gen processors together give you the capability to run PCI Express Gen 4, which is double the speed of PCI Express Gen 3 at the same link width. However, ASUS actually just published a chart of their motherboard, so we've got this here on hexus.net, showing that some of their last generation X470 and even their more value-oriented B450 boards have PCIe Gen 4 support or, or capability. So ironically, um, none of their ROG boards have Gen 4 16x support. Um, <laughs> So, you know, that's pretty funny. But some of their Prime and Tough series boards actually do. So you could plug a PCIe Gen 4 graphics card into your system and get a Gen 4 link if you have a Ryzen 3rd Gen processor installed in it. And actually, quite a lot of the boards support PCIe Gen 4 for the M.2 slot, which in my opinion is actually a little bit more important because PCIe Gen 4 16X is so far beyond what a graphics card needs at this point in time outside of some very specialized workloads that faster storage is probably a, a more practical use for PCI Gen, PCIe Gen 4 at this point in time. Now, what I actually don't have any clarification on at this point, because I haven't actually read the article, is how this affects the link between the CPU and the chipset. I would imagine that's still a Gen 3 link because the chipset itself is not Gen 4 capable to my knowledge. But for the rest of it, the way that it works is your CPU is just, it's PCI Express pins are just connected to those slots or to that M.2 slot. So as long as the signaling quality is sufficient, it can negotiate a Gen 4 link on these boards, as long as the device on the other end is PCIe Gen 4. It's just, it's just copper. Like, that's what it is. It's copper. Now, the way that they route the traces has to be better for PCIe Gen 4 so that you avoid interference. And that's why ASUS is saying, well, hey, look, these boards aren't going to handle it because of whatever reason. Or if you had something like a PCI Express uh, switch or something, if that doesn't have Gen 4 capability, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to necessarily handle it. Actually, I don't know. How would a PLX chip be affected by that? I would think it would have to be natively Gen 4. Don't quote me on that. Maybe I'll have to get back to you on that 
anyway, the point is, it looks like there are some boards with PCIe Gen 4 capability from the last generation, which kind of eliminates the one key benefit of X570, especially because a lot of them are passively cooled. <laughs> <laughs> Just like... Uh, okay, so I'm going to bring oh. you back a little bit. Yeah, please because do. Because... You just talked about how it's very interesting, but something you mentioned at the beginning of the show was the controversy problem, where a lot of people are going, oh, cool, but you think if it was the other team, they would be getting really mad. Yeah, so Intel had something similar, where they had a line of chips um, that, oh, and I'm gonna screw up the code names, Coffee Lake. So they had a line of chips that could have worked on their Z170 and Z270 boards, and Intel decided to say no, they're not compatible, and um, because while some <coughs> boards would have worked, um, and that was proven, enthusiast members of the community got Coffee Lake chips working by spoofing IDs or masking pins or doing whatever funny things that the community does. I love you guys so much, you're amazing. Um, so they actually made Coffee Lake chips work on previous generation boards. And so I guess this is just, so I said that at the beginning of the show, but I'm actually not sure that I agree with it anymore. It doesn't because, fully feel the same. Yeah, there's a bit of a difference in the way that they handled it. So AMD still has time to pull an Intel on this and lock it down, like manually lock it down, which is what Intel did. But the stance that AMD is taking here is not actually that different, where they're saying, look, because we don't want to create confusion in the, in the marketplace, we're just going to say... X570, yes, everything else, no. That's it. And that's exactly what Intel did. Because there were previous generation boards that wouldn't work with it, either because the VRM design wasn't good enough or any other number of reasons, they said, well then, nothing. Because our compatibility matrix cannot be that complicated. Because you gotta remember- And the, this is a little yeah. funky. You would kind it of expect funky. top of the line ROG boards to support it, and the fact that they don't is weird and kind of confusing. Yeah, the fact that the lower end ones The fact don't. that the, like, tough and prime boards do is like, okay. So by keeping the message simple, hey, the new gen works, the old one doesn't, you avoid ticking off the customer who just spent $400 on a crosshair whatever, and now has less functionality today. Than the B450 guy. Than the B450 guy that saved a buck last time. Um, which, like, I mean, that's great, and it's cool that they have support, but I totally understand why this would be confusing. And it's I, like the inverse of what you'd expect. And keeping the messaging clean can be the best bet a lot of the time because, um, I mean, a perfect example of this is giveaways. You guys might have noticed we don't do a lot of giveaways on our channel. The reason for that is that for every one person that you make happy, you piss off 10,000. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so <clears throat> for someone like an Intel or an AMD, for every one enthusiast that they make happy by enabling this feature, and Optane was another one, <clears throat> where it could have been backported to older generation boards, but they didn't because they didn't want to make it confusing. For every enthusiast that you please out of the last generation, you are going to create a bunch of confusion with normies who don't understand why their stuff doesn't work. Um, so I get it, but I also think AMD so far has been better about this in that they are at least allowing it to work rather than manually locking it off. Um, yeah, so something interesting, uh, how you talked about like enabling things can sometimes be bad, doing giveaways can yep. sometimes be bad. Interesting random little tidbit, yep. we added casting to the app, but it was in a known somewhat buggy state, but it would probably work for a lot of people, and we were like, oh, we can release this version. It says that it's an alpha, every single time we release a new version of the app, there's a big pop-up talking about everything, and we say specifically in there, casting might be buggy. Average ratings for the app went down when we added casting as a feature, because people were like, hey, casting doesn't work, bam, get wrecked. Instead of people going like, oh, five star, it'll be cool when more features come. Now they're going like, feature got here, didn't fully work even though you said it might not, get wrecked. And it's like, it's interesting, I'm not complaining, it's just an interesting observation yeah. that sometimes giving people something is not actually great because if it doesn't work properly or, if, else. or if someone else doesn't yeah. get it or whatever, it's gonna create animosity and that makes sense. Um, it was just, it was a really interesting observation. So you can the app, I'm gonna throw this in here really quick. iOS app is like very much on the way. It just takes so much longer to do anything in relation to Apple than it does with Google. 
Holy crap. Our app has to be manually reviewed by like really? a, a person and I have to like give them a write up explaining the app and how it works and all this kind of wow. stuff that they have to read before it can be test flighted for like not even actual release. And then we have to do that and then we're going to have to actually release it at which point I believe it has to be manually reviewed again but I'm not certain on that. And it's going to take like a few business days to get manually reviewed. So it's coming. <laughs> I don't know exactly when, because it's kind of in their court, but it's on the way. Yeah. All right. <sighs> Want to go play some video games? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Food's so, here. Food's here? Yeah. Heck, Heck yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're heading to the lounge. Uh, good night, ladies and gentlemen. See you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye. Hey, wait. You're going to do something next week. Should people be, like, looking out for you there? Uh, I'll be at IEM. Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, so Luke's gonna be there. Um, Intel sponsoring you, yeah. if I recall correctly. So I, don't, I think I'm building a computer or something. Uh, you're doing some streams, I think, in panels. Cool. Yeah. So guys, check him out. He's gonna be at IEM in Chicago. Don't miss it if yeah. you're going to IEM in Chicago. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm not gonna say, like, get on a flight to see this guy, because if you're gonna do that, come to LTS. Yeah. Come to LTS. I was literally just gonna say. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye.